Hey guys, what is up? Hope everybody has been having a very wonderful day, wherever you are. I have another awesome golf course for you guys today. This course was a monster. As you guys can see in the bottom left, it's almost 8,000 yards, a rating of 78. Definitely, uh, definitely an absolute tank of a golf course, uh, Trump National DC. So, um, it was a pretty cloudy day today, and, uh, it's definitely a grind, but um, there were some awesome shots today, and you guys are definitely going to want to stick around towards the end as I finally started hitting some decent shots. But, uh, yeah, a little bit a little bit rainy um, on and off, so I definitely had to contend with that a little bit. But uh, all in all, really had a lot of fun. And it's been a really nice way to test my game playing these types of courses. And um, I feel like it's definitely made me better. So have uh, about 65 yards left here, hitting a flighted sand wedge. The pin was in the back shelf, so uh, just trying to run that thing back up there. I did a really good job of scooting it all the way back to the pin and uh, have a really good look at birdie. Also, just so you guys know, um, I will be uploading every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That is the schedule for the channel. And um, every Friday, an 18-hole vlog. I do have some matches in the uh, works as well, so stay on the lookout for that. It's a really great start here. Definitely nice to get off with a red number. And a very beautiful hole too. And now we're on to the 655 yard second hole. And uh, this will be a theme. So it definitely, <laughs> there weren't many breather holes in this golf course, but uh, I've played this course a couple times um kind of sporadically throughout the last like seven or eight years but uh don't remember too much of it so it definitely did feel like it was my first round back really good tee shot here absolutely smoked it up the middle and uh i've actually tweaked my driver with cobra a little bit we just finished um i'm actually in colorado at the time of this recording and i am exhausted we just finished filming three different golf courses super excited to bring you guys those um, like a couple courses in the 8,000 yard range and uh, in the, and while we were doing that um, I was spending like three or four hours a day getting my clubs dialed in so I'm really excited with where things are right now with my game and then as I move into competitive events this winter hopefully I can start to really build on all that and bring my scoring average down you know obviously with with competition there's a lot more nerves involved and I do think I might struggle, struggle a little bit to start off, but I think as I get more comfortable out there, I think it'll come back to me pretty quickly because I played a ton of events when I was a junior from like age of four all the way up to 18. So I definitely have muscle memory there, hopefully. So a couple of really good shots here to get it to the front part of the green. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't really pick up on it with my practice strokes that that was dead into the green. Um, probably should have putted that it, it is obviously wet and um, when you have a tight end of the green shot and you're not making a big swing you pretty much have to have a perfect low point um, or you can do that and gave it a good run for birdie but I'll end up settling for par and by the way I've definitely noticed that's just something it's kind of like one of the missing keys to my game like my chipping is awesome when I'm just kind of chilling out and uh working around the practice area, stuff like that. And I just get this kind of nervousness on the golf course. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to kind of throw me off, I feel like. Um, because, like, I was at uh, TBC Colorado a couple of days ago working with um, Ben Showman, one of the Cobra reps, and I was just hitting awesome chip shots, awesome pitch shots, and felt completely dialed in. So if I can replicate that mental feel on the golf course – I know I have the game in the short game to really take it deep, but uh, definitely a tough par three here, and it went a little long, and I was surprised. I didn't think it would go this far over the green, especially considering the fact that it was, uh, you know, pretty wet and damp outside, and uh, obviously at sea level, but at least I can hit a second shot. So it just got a fraction under this. I mean, this was so close to being perfect. <laughs> you can see my frustration. Um, I mean, 
if it would have gotten through that fringe, it probably would have rolled another eight or nine feet. I would have been looking at maybe, you know, a four or five footer instead of like a, like a 15 footer, but uh, that's the golf. So my par putt here looked good for a little bit, but then it started sliding onto the weak side. So I'm going to drop a shot here. A Trump National DC, I mean, these are some of the hardest par threes I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, we're just getting warmed up. There's one in about five or six holes that was just, just I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it was just absolutely impossible. So now we're on to the next hole, par four, 508 yards. And, uh, yeah, 500 yard par fours are also going to be a theme for today's round. So absolutely went full send here. I thought this was going to be a really good shot. I thought it was going to carry that bunker, but it just hit the back lip of it. Um, kind of came back and you could see kind of how it funneled back down. So definitely lost a good 25 yards of roll there. Made this uh, approach shot a lot longer than I would have liked. And uh, so I have 178 yards pitching wedge. The lip isn't a huge issue, but I was definitely on my mind. So... Just gonna try to hoist it up and over the lip. Hit a really good shot, just uh, exactly what I wanted. I'm just glad that I was able to catch it solid and get some good spin on it. And frankly, just happy that it's on the green. That's all I could really ask for. But uh, yeah, this round was honestly just a complete grind. And I knew when I was driving down, because I live in Maryland, so it wasn't too far of a drive for me, but I knew with the, <laughs> the weather, I wasn't gonna be getting much help from, you know, roll out and all that stuff, so. Um, you know, that was definitely something that, uh, I knew would be a factor. So I have about a 40 footer here. Really, my goal is just to cozy it on up close. Not a bad putt at all. Ran a little bit by the hole, but about four feet left here to clean up my par. And you can see kind of how I go through the process of lining this putt up. I cut out a lot of it, but I actually, I do spend a ton of time reading the putts and uh, definitely helps make them that's for sure really good putt there so even through four not a bad start on to the fifth hole 445 yards par four and uh, pretty straightforward hole here I'm just going to try to hit it up the left side the hole does bend to the left so I'm just going to sling a one iron in there try to hit it down the fairway as far as I can so, pretty good tee shot. Landed on the downslope of that rough on the left side and kicked forward nicely. Gave me a little bit of extra roll. And uh, really good setup for my second shot. And, uh, yeah, I got about a little over 100 yards here, 131 yards. Pitchy wedge. Just going to try to flight this thing down and, uh, you know, just try to hit it under the wind it did, the wind was starting to pick up a little bit more and as you guys can probably notice definitely some more um rain droplets going on so i squ squirted this one out to the right a bit and uh yeah definitely not my best i've been having an issue with uh, my flighted shots of the club face being left open and i know the reason is because my shoulder and my hips are kind of working under the ball instead of on top of and through the ball. And it's been very difficult because obviously, you know, I'm a power player. And so to create power, you need to explode. So I'm trying to fight that instinct on those shots. And once I get, to, it's a very consistent miss. So that's the really good thing. Cause you can work with a consistent miss with, you know, how you play the game and also with how to improve it. So we spent a lot of time working on that. Me and Ben, the last couple days, we made some good progress, but uh, it's definitely, it'll definitely take some time, but I'm very confident that we're going to get it figured out. And uh, so, really saw a par here, and honestly, can't complain at all about this start, even through five. And um, on to the next hole, par five. Probably my first, like, reasonably easy hole, like 583 yards, definitely something I can work with. So, a bit of a dog leg left too. So, I'm just going to try to send it with the driver here. And I uh, made a pretty big mistake on this swing. I know it at this point. Like, it's. I was hoping it would maybe fall a little straighter than it did. Um, 
but uh, that will be in the hazard, unfortunately. So took my drop. Fortunately, it did cross pretty far down, so I didn't lose too much distance. Um, but definitely not the spot to be, especially when you have an entire hole on the right side you can hit it into. So 196 yards, got my pitching wedge in hand. It can definitely get tough when um, when you have a lot of water being introduced into the equation on top of the rough. It gets very tough for me to predict how far my clubs will go, and that is something I struggle with a lot. Um, it's not necessarily a terrible problem because it always is good to have more distance than not enough distance. And by the way, there's a cute little deer right there, just chilling. But um, out of the rough, especially when you introduce more variables like wind and water and rain, I guess, it definitely makes it very difficult to predict where the ball is going to come down. And since I create so much speed, um, given the launch angles at that speed, when you remove spin, you just have no idea where that ball is going to come down. This one was actually a great shot, just a fraction short. And unfortunately, this thing came out a little hot. You can see I'm getting a little annoyed. Um, definitely kind of frustrated that I'm making a mess of this hole. And that's a bit of a mistake I made mentally. Like, I kind of knew this hole was coming up because I saw it on the scorecard. I think um, I kind of started depending on this hole to uh, give me an easy birdie. And then, um, obviously, expectations. When you set expectations, you're really just setting yourself up to be in a position to be upset or angry or nervous about how well you're doing and not being able to keep your round going so um bit me in the butt a little bit there so one over through six on a whole f seven 461 yard par four up in the the uh body of water on the left is the potomac river so definitely makes for a beautiful but um intimidating tee shot and I think I was definitely a little intimidated. It got in my head a bit. I hit a shot that almost was a cold top. I was very lucky it had enough backspin to stay in the air. Um, kind of squirted it out a little bit to the right, and uh, I'm just happy at this point I have a second shot, and I'm hitting it towards the green with an iron in my hand. But this is a very awkward shot. It was a bit of a headwind and an uphill lie, and I just didn't know how hot this ball would come out. But I hit an awesome shot um, with the 8-iron. Just the wrong club by, like, two clubs. But for me, I would not have been able to comfortably hit a 6-iron there. I, I would have been in my head about going over the green. So great line, just about, you know, like 25, 30 yards short. And this was an absolutely brutal pin location. So I have a, about a 25-yard chip shot. Um, excuse me, about a 75-foot putt. I was just now realizing how dumb it was for me to try to putt this. But uh, honestly, I just didn't want anything to do with that chip shot because my shot from two was still in my head. And, uh, yeah, I just didn't get the right pace at all. That putt looked impossible from back there. I felt like I had no chance. Um, rolled all the way to the back edge of the green. So I have this left for par. Got about 10, 12 feet here. So... It's definitely been tough, though. I mean, this course, this was not an easy day at all. So it was a good grind for me. And, uh, again, thought this one might stay up. Just, you know, it's been weird with the putter. Like, I feel like I'm making good strokes. I just, I'm either slightly misreading it or just, you know, a fraction off with my speed. But I can't really say I hate my stroke right now at all. So I'd be very curious to see what would happen if um, I started working with a caddy, someone who knew how to read greens really well. I think my putty would improve substantially. And uh, so, on to the next full hole eight, drivable, par four. Letting it go with the one iron. A bit of a pull here, but not a bad miss at all. The ball pretty much is falling dead straight. The wind is off the left and in my face, so I think it was just straight up and down with that wind. And uh, caught the bunker, not a terrible miss at all. And, uh, yeah, so definitely a dicey little shot, though, because that pin is kind of on the back of a shelf there from my vantage point, and I just caught this a little too thin. This honestly wasn't far off from being a great shot, just a little thin, and uh, it skipped all the way through the green. So it's definitely been a rough go the last uh, probably two, three holes, but when you play courses like this, that will happen. So you just got to stay patient, and that's something that has been – 
I've really had to work on a lot is staying patient and playing courses like this have definitely forced me to learn that. I've also been spending a lot of time reading some books by Dr. Rotella. So that's helped out a lot as well. Just really trying to um, make it more of a uh, second nature thing. And uh, yeah, so I got about three feet here, cleaned that up for par. So definitely feels good to get off the bogey train. You guys know how that feels. It's never a fun uh, thing when you just can't get in rhythm. Now, this might be the hardest par 3 in the middle Atlantic. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Um, this par 3 is almost 250 yards long. And I feel like it's not normally a crazy tough par 3. Obviously, it's still really tough. But this pin location was on a back shelf. Not only was it like a shelf, but you guys will see it when, when we get up there. If you go even a fraction long, it's going to roll all the way down off the green. Like, there's literally just a collection area, and it's, like, literally impossible. So you can see that collection area down there. This is the tabletop, and then I hit mine to the top part of that and rolled back. So that's kind of a crappy feeling when you hit a four iron into a crosswind that's hurting you a little bit, hit it right at the pin, lands, and then rolls back off the shelf. So that was um, definitely difficult, but... You know, it really does prepare you to uh, play great golf. You know, when you play these tough courses, it really, I feel like, gives you a good feel for what you need to do. So, a little, little short here on the pace. I have about three, four feet left. Save my par. The good thing about these tabletop greens, you know, when you get to the right shelf, is it's, it's really straightforward. And that's, like, the one tip I can give. Like, if you guys are playing greens that are on a shelf, just keep in mind that if you can just get on that shelf, typically the architects will make the greens pretty flat because if, it's, if you're already on a shelf, they don't want, you know, the ball rolling off of it. So it'll always be pretty flat up there. And there's a pretty cool view of the water tower. I mean, sorry, the waterfall and the uh, clubhouse. Truly a very beautiful golf course. Now, hole 10. Letting it rip the one iron. Pulled it just a little bit. But um, there's a little collar of rough you guys might be able to see. And I hit dead into it, and it kicks straight sideways. So I lost a, yard, a lot of yardage there. And, and also, you guys might have noticed, like, the last couple holes have been right along the Potomac. And I think the next one and maybe the one after that also. And that was a very difficult because every one of those was into a hurting crosswind. So it was like getting punched in the face over and over. Um, definitely a very difficult stretch of holes. And this was definitely an awkward shot here, you know, because you got that hurting crosswind, and, and it's an uphill. It's like the third uphill um, lie I've had into this wind. I got very lucky here. That ball was leaking to the right, landed just on the top of the fringe and kind of just settled in between the fringe and the rough. And um, honestly, didn't know if I was going to be hitting a third shot or not, frankly. So... I have a sandwich here. Not a terrible leave, honestly, given the fact that it's up. And again, just a little firm with my chip. Just I don't I think part of it is I'm just having trouble getting a feel for how hot that ball is coming out of the grass. It looks a lot it looks like the ball is gonna come out a lot better than it does. And then this one just You know, the struggle's real. And this game is hard. I, I really wasn't too upset at that putt. I just it just snapped to the right on me. So on hole eleven, the fourth straight hole that runs along the Potomac. And uh, yeah, I'm like, can we please play a hole in a different direction? <laughs> I am just absolutely ready to start playing some downwind holes. I did hit a pretty good tee shot here up the left side, and uh, carried nice. He was able to cut off a solid part portion of the. Um, of the hole, but you guys can tell with the distance that went. I mean, it is just everything is just getting knocked down at this point. So in the left rough, pin is on the right center of the green on the front edge. 148 yards. Going to try to knock down a pitching wedge here, and that's another thing I've been working on is hitting knockdown shots out of the rough to try to control my distance a little more. And again, it's just a theme. I told you guys this earlier. It, it's 90% of my misses of my knockdown shot are to the right, and we know exactly what it is. You know, my shoulder, my my um, hip are working under the ball instead of around and through it, 
and it's the most frustrating thing in the world because on the range, I just can do it over and over and over perfectly. The second you put me on a golf course with a little bit of pressure, um, it, it changes. But I, I have noticed, though, that it's getting better every round. Like, my misses aren't as big as they used to be. Um, and I am starting to hit some really good shots as well. So it's trending in the right direction. And it definitely takes time. I'm sure you guys know this very well. It takes time to get good at this game. And it takes even more time to get really good at this game. So I'm really just trying to approach it with a lot of patience because I have been playing well. It's just a matter of um, staying patient and, you know, not letting this game knock you down too much. Because if you, if you let it, it will keep you there permanently, you know, where you can't, you just don't have any confidence and you don't want to keep pushing. So it's just about fighting each day to get better and learning more about yourself, who you are as a player, and how to play this game the best you can. So uh, on hole 12, par 5. And a good tip, instead of getting mad on the green if you miss a putt, unleash that anger on your drive on the next hole. Much more productive, and I have had great success doing it. So really good tee shot here. Put myself in great position. Pins in the right center of the green. And a bit of a kind of a, a saddle, I guess, or I guess I don't know what you call it, but like it's in the bottom of like a depression. So it funneled in nicely. So... Got uh, 217 yards with an 8-iron. And again, this was the wind now is almost a complete straight crosswind, so I'm no longer facing like headwinds, just a wind off my left. So this is like a huge breath of fresh air to finally be going in a different direction. And I've uh, hit a really solid shot here, flighted it nicely. And I've really been working on the cadence with my irons, and uh, it's paid off a lot. I feel very smooth with my irons, and... I'm super excited to see how the, I literally just got a full new set of clubs a couple of days ago, and we've also gotten them dialed in. So I'm super excited to see how those perform in the coming weeks and months. So got a little bit of a difficult putt here, 25, 30 feet up the hill and then back down over the crown. Um, honestly, can't say I'm too upset with this putt. My whole thing was speed control. Um, I was able to do that pretty well. So I have about three feet or so here left for the birdie. And uh, it's been, um, honestly, I feel like my sh my really short putting, three to four feet, hasn't been too bad today. I feel like I've been making some pretty sh steady rolls of the ball. Just once I get out to like the five, six, seven, eight foot range, I've just been struggling a little bit. But they haven't been missing by much, just a little bit off. So it felt really good to get one back there um, on the 13 guys can see the rain it's i gotta be honest i gotta give props to um this phone like you know i film a lot of my stuff with my phone and it was raining pretty good and i actually feel like this shows up pretty nicely on camera so i was pleasantly surprised so hit a really good tee shot here bit off a little more than i wanted to but um it did fall back to the right a little bit and um actually ended up working out pretty well I thought it was actually going to get to the fairway, but it took a bit of a kick left when it landed. You guys can see that American flag there. That wind is now blowing down and out um, off my right. So that's something I got to factor in when I hit this shot. So I'm going to try to sling this in from the right and just get it to just carry over those bunkers. On Pretty much, honestly, right at that flag is kind of my target. And a uh, pretty good shot here. This is one of those flighted shots where I feel like I did kind of have good timing on it. And um, so there are a lot of good signs showing up with that flighted shot. And I'll be honest, guys, I am feeling pretty dangerous. You know, I know it'll take some time to get comfortable playing competitively. I'm not, you know, I'm, no, I'm very aware of that. I know there's a lot of mental uh, things I got to improve on. But my raw game feels amazing. And I feel like I got a really good situation now with my life where I'm very motivated to see how far I can take it. And uh, we'll see what uh, comes of it. And, uh, yeah, I thought that thing was going to be canned for sure. That would have been a nice uh, couple birdies there. But uh, I'll able, I will take tap-in birdies on this course whenever I – I mean, sorry, tap-in pars on this course whenever I can get them. Tap-in birdies are even better. 
So on hole 14, pin is on the right shelf. So I'm going to, I honestly had a, uh, I don't know why I took six iron here. I feel like I, I was trying to be a little cute and play like a hold off cut, which I realized halfway through my swing, I don't have my arsenal. So yeah, I hit the good old double cross. Actually went left of that flag, which is pretty impressive. And um, I will actually end up on the tee box <laughs> of the next hole. I thought I was actually going to be in some trouble, but luckily there was a little good amount of room back there. So hitting this and uh, from the tee box, and I'm going to be able to spin it. It hit like one of the mounds on the green and just bounced straight up. Otherwise... I think this would have been maybe three or four feet away instead of being 15 feet away. You guys can actually see the mound right behind me. It hit right into that and bounced straight up. So I have this for par. And honestly, I'm thinking this is a lip out. I was very, very surprised that that thing curled in there, but um, definitely felt good. And I feel like for the most part, I've staunched the bleeding from the middle part of the round. And, you know... Again, that's why I really enjoy playing these courses, you know, really challenging myself because I really do want to force myself to have to stay patient, put up with the game's BS from time to time, and just kind of keep plodding along through the round. And I feel like I really did a good job of that. So again, going back the other way now on the Potomac, a much more welcome direction. It was right on the right line and uh, fell a little bit left. Just inside the car path line, so honestly not a bad leave at all. Just going to have a little bit of above the above the uh, feet action here. Pin was on the left center of the green, so that is definitely an accessible pin location. And there is the Potomac in all its glory. So 113 yards coming in with the sand wedge. And again, i got to be really careful because with the ball being above my feet, the ball is going to want to jump to the left and jump hard. So I always try to take off at least 10 to 15 percent when I have a ball above my feet in the rough and I found that's a pretty good rule of thumb for me this one actually was a great shot pulled it a little bit more left than I would have liked but can't complain about this at all and god look at that still went longer the pin I mean it's crazy how much how soft I have to hit some of these shots but um you know the good thing is I am starting to hit them so that's the first step have about uh yeah, 10 12 feet here a little slippery birdie putt and uh, I feel like I have a really good bead on this this read. And I absolutely had the perfect line. But uh, I guess part of it was it has been raining for some time now. And I think maybe that water on the green might have made the difference there. So on hole 16, on our way home, as you can see, the clubhouse is in the background. Just abs these par threes were so freaking hard. I mean, they were... They get 258 yards, and this pin was in the back left shelf. And uh, I make probably one of my best swings all day here. Really good pace of the swing. This thing's a laser right at it. And I actually can't quite see where it lands because it is a, the, the, the visibility isn't amazing right now. So I'm thinking this thing is tight. And unfortunately, it's just long and no bueno. So... Going to have a very, very difficult second shot here, but uh, felt nice to be able to hit a good shot at least, you know, a good line and make the swing I wanted to. So I'm going to be hoisting this thing up in the air. I actually gets a piece of the flag, which I think helps slow down a little bit. I was honestly hoping that thing would fly in because then I would definitely have something cool to show with you guys on Instagram, and um, I could put that in a thumbnail of the video that I hold out. But um, not today, unfortunately. So I have about 10 feet coming back up the hill for my par. Again, I feel like I hit a great putt here. Just snakes to the left a little bit. You guys can tell my level of frustration by how far I bend at the, at the hip after a missed putt. So if my head almost hits the ground, that means I'm very frustrated. That's a good way to tell. If I go to 90 degrees, I'm kind of frustrated, but not super frustrated. So probably the last really good scoring opportunity here, um, hole 17, 555 yards. Sorry for saying last so loud. I don't know why I did. Um, so I'm going to absolutely rip this one and uh, hit a really good shot here. Started it up the left side, and it is peeling back just a little bit, just enough to be in the left side of the fairway. 
So definitely really good, really good uh, start to the hole there. And gonna have probably about I want to say 200, 180, 200 left. Um, but uh, absolutely beautiful landscape here, just really amazing. So yeah, 175 here at the pitching wedge. Just I feel like this is a pretty comfortable club for me here. Um, definitely want to set up for my miss to be right because left is not good. And I, I kind of just, I feel like I kind of gave up on this shot a little bit. I really just, I don't think I was really super comfortable with how that my eyes saw this, this shot. You know, I, I don't know why. But um, frankly, not a bad leave. Because, I mean, left was just, would have been so stupid. And there was a lot of room right. So... Definitely a decent decent leave and uh, still have a good chance for birdie. And that's something I've really been focusing on is leaving myself in better spots off the tee and on my approach shots where I can get up and down more easily. Hit a really good shot here. Got the ball to land pretty softly. Given the fact I was above the green, helps make that landing angle a little steeper and makes it easier to hold the green, which is always nice. Left me about three feet here for my birdie. And uh, another really good putt. As I said, three to four foot putts have been very, very solid. So now in a hole 18, absolute monster of a par four up the hill. Really pretty hole. So great way to end what is a really beautiful golf course in a golf in a great golf round. So you can absolutely send mail to this one. I've absolutely ripped this thing. I mean, I, I don't think this thing moved an inch while I was in the air. My goal is to really just try to take those bunkers out. Um, I think it's about 350, 360 to carry them. This ball probably carried about 375, so mission accomplished. Got it into the flash. You can see the pitch mark there. Maybe got like two yards of roll. And there's the waterfall in the background. That's where a lot of people have, have weddings and stuff, so not a bad spot to get married if I do say so myself. And this is just the whole property, just, again, just an absolutely gorgeous layout. Um, 121 yards left here, but playing probably 10 yards longer with the elevation change. You also got to keep in mind it's going to land shallower, so it's going to want to skip a little more than normal. Pin was in the back as well, so that was definitely also something for me to keep in mind. So a lower shot would help scoot it all the way back there, and that's exactly what I was able to do. Got it all the way under the back shelf. So have a good look at birdie to close this round out. It's definitely been a battle, as I'm sure you guys have seen. By the way, that waterfall is so much higher than in person. Like, it's it's really insane. It's monolithic. So I have about 15 feet here to close out my round. Pretty slippery putt. But uh, I'm going to try to trickle this one on in. And just again, just trying to make a really smooth stroke and just kind of snaps on me at the end. So I will tap that in for a 75 and um, really great time. Really enjoyed my round out there and uh, just a beautiful course. So I, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. Another new video will be dropping. So if you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.